Matrix is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but one, once reality, once reality set in, and I was in that motherfucking D or G League, whatever it was called, like. I was living better at UCLA. There's no hey, yo, hey, I said, yo, yeah. I said the same thing when I got drafted. I yeah. took a pay, pay cut coming yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> for real, man. I mean, they, you know, th th through the grace of God, you know, I kept landing with some new trucks and a nice little apartment at UCLA. <laughs> you know, when I'm about to get drafted, I signed with arms. So, you know, they front me the, what, the 50, 60,000 to get the Escalade, and that's when you get the TVs. And yeah, the yeah, yeah. No, it was kind of sweet like, on the top. Right, so you, but you it know, was like you, motivation for all of us. Right. Like, oh, she got the black right. Escalades on 26. It was like, But then the real shit is, 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 is the humbling fact is like, like, yo, I can't afford this now I'm yeah. not in the league you know what I mean so having that flip that sell that and then go on this grind in Fayetteville North Carolina of all places you know what I mean so that's a, a really another reason obviously my football mentality but just kind of understanding the grind that I had to get to get to the NBA that's why I played every single game like it was my last because I had been through the the mother bottom of the toilet uh, with that I was just like this is not the life I want to live so let's see what we can do yeah see people don't understand like to really like like to really make it in anything you know, it's two avenues. Love, right? You just love it to death where you're going to just do it. Or pain. That you never want to feel mm -hmm. <laughs> the way you felt in that moment ever again, which puts you on the path of being great. So when mm -hmm. you hear stories, it's usually the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, this happened, my mom was struggling, and I had to boom, 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 right? Or a Tiger Woods story where they are well off, right? Or the Grant Hill story, they are mm -hmm. well off. But those kids love it so much that they become mm -hmm. who they are. You know, like Steph Curry. You know, yep. They're privileged, you know, right. but they love the game so much, that's what got them. So mm -hmm. you only got two paths. Yeah. You know See, what I mean? It, it's interesting because I, I didn't, it was weird. I loved basketball, but not like the type of love, like I'll do anything for it. It was weird because, you know, when we were growing up, and, and same with you, Joe, like we weren't training, like we were moving, or I know I, I was just moving on to the next sport. We played a lot of pickup basketball, but as mm -hmm. far as the individual skill, we were never doing that, mm -hmm. ever. You know what I mean? If you had it, you had it. That wasn't necessarily my strength, so I didn't, and when I tell people this, like I didn't start working out for the NBA until I made the NBA. Mm -hmm. And now, like fast forward, you know, so many years removed, and we have children now. Like our kids have those. You know, we <laughs> train. Trainers. We train our kids. Dude, we have dude. trainers for our kids, and it's just like, yo, we never did none of this shit because I was someone in high school that did football, baseball, basketball, and track. So I was from one season to another. Never even took a recruiting trip. I just know I came to LA on a recruiting trip. I saw sun, palm trees, the beach, women. <laughs> like I'm gonna go to school here. It, it, just, it just makes sense. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But I never went to Arizona until uh -huh. we actually played them. I thought, like, damn, if I would have came here, I took a visit here, I probably would have went to Arizona. But I was just always in another season, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I never really trained for my sports. And again, not that I didn't love basketball because I did love basketball, but basketball was never my life at all. You know what I mean? Like I, I love the fact that I got paid good money to, to play a game, but it was never really my life. So that's why when you see shit with me in the media or off the court because like I said I never looked at myself as like a basketball player like I every shit that happened to me like I approached it like I'm a man first like mm -hmm. the NBA so if you're gonna do some ill shit some ill shit might come back to you type situation so again I had a love for the sport but I was it, it was never like my life let's fast forward your last year in the league 2017 you're on the Kings kind of you know end up I think getting, getting released after the boogie trade mm -hmm. Warriors come calling they got obviously KD Steph that mm -hmm. squad how excited are you when you find out you're going literally from the Kings to yeah. the team that's going to win a ring? So what happened was it was, you know, I would just got traded from the Clippers to Memphis. Uh, the Memphis shit didn't really work out. Their GM was full of shit. So I ended up leaving and signing um, a three-year deal with Sacramento. And this is right when, you know, I'm figuring like, fuck, let me just go home and end my career with Sacramento. You know, they got a new arena. Let's, you know, maybe sneak into that eight seed, bring some energy back to the city and kind of play on that. So when I go to Sacramento, I enjoy it. Like I said, I, I'm going home. I'm going to finish my career, you know, where I played high school basketball at. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And the whole season, somehow I got named like the Boogie Whisperer. So any like anyone had anything to say to Boogie, they would come to me because me and Boogie had a, <laughs> like, like a, a mutual respect. Like he <laughs> listened to me, you know, although I wasn't on the caliber of his player. I just I just my reputation, you know, preceded me and it kind of spoke for me. So he always would listen to what I had to say because, you know, he knows I wouldn't lead him wrong. So just that whole season, you know, they're whispering to me, everyone from the owners to the GMs to the coaches, you know, we're, we're good here. You know, how is he, you know, tell him he's not getting traded, this, this and that. And it's just like they're coming to me and saying all this shit. So when he actually gets traded at all at the All-Star game while he's on the podium, I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers spent half the beginning of the, the whole beginning of the season telling me to tell him that he's not going anywhere. And then you motherfuckers.
trade him while he's doing an interview at the All-Star game. I'm like, damn. So when that happens, you know, me and Blotty talking, like we were, I want to say like a game and a half out of eighth or two games out of eighth. So like a, the, my goal going into it was just make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. The Warriors are the team at the time. Try to steal one game in the playoffs, but just bring that kind of excitement back to Sacramento and just kind of, you know, like I said, trying to build on that. So they just decided that, you know, they said the Buddy Heald was supposed to be the next Steph Curry. They felt like Boogie's time up there was up and he was gone. So when I talked to Vladi, I'm like, Vladi, I'm, you know, I'm 36. I'm too old to rebuild, you know. So we discussed the situation to where, you know, I would be able to leave. They still had to pay me and then I was free to join someone else. Um, rewind to the beginning of that summer, KD and I were talking because, I mean, he's just like, you know, we got to know each other pretty well through battling through the playoffs. He's like, you know, I want you to come, you know, come, come play with me, come with me. So I'm just like, all right. He's like, he's like you know, which, I was like, what are you going to do? He's like, you know, the Golden State thing. I was just like, really? He's like, I'm not, I'm not sure. He's just like, you know, but that's where I'm kind of leaning to. I'm like, well, shit, I'm, I'm definitely down. So when you get your shit done, you know, let me know and I'll slide in there. Once he got his shit done, there was obviously not a penny left. So, you know, I t obviously <laughs> took more money with, go or with, with Sacramento, but then you know, once I left Sacramento, um, maybe like four or five days later, um, KD gets hurt in, in, in D.C. where he hyperextends his knee. And I get a phone call from Steve Kerr like, hey, you know, KD went down. You know, we wanted to get you this past summer. Things didn't work out, but we would love to have you come out here now. I'm like, he's like, are you willing? I'm like, yeah. Like, so with me, and the, me and the twins are at KFC. It's like 7 o'clock at night. We had just finished working out. I was working out with them. We're eating our little chicken, our little hot wings, and I was just like, he's like, yeah, can you be packed and ready to come to Chicago tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, so I flew to Chicago the next day, and then the, the next game, I'm, I'm there, I'm, I'm a warrior, and I go out there and play like 25 minutes of my first game, and I'm like, shit, that was kind of like a, a crazy <laughs> five-day whirlwind that, that ended up working out for the best, but, you know, the f***ed up part about that situation and then the, the, in the way my words have been twisted about me winning a championship and not wanting to, to, to accept the ring was, you know, I go in there, um, obviously it's going to be a group effort to try to replace someone for like KD. You know, I'm getting a lot of, you know, I'm playing, you know, 20, 24 minutes a game, playing well, doing my part. The very first game KD comes back like a week before the playoffs, I spray my, like severely spray my ankle, like almost broke my ankle. Like my, I don't ever swell from anything. This shit was a balloon. I'm like, Fuck. so we're a week out from the playoffs. KD's back. We're supposed to hit our stride and go win this championship. Um, so my ankle has me hampered feeling in a, and I didn't even feel good once I was you know ready to kind of go out there but basically to the Western Conference Finals and you know by that time me being a vet and understanding the situation they were already rolling the chemistry you got your rotations by that point so to me I was just you know trying to be that that vet talking to people here and there practicing when I needed to practice for the guys and just staying ready um, but when they won the championship like obviously I felt like my body of work over my career, I felt like I earned that ring because I, you know, I put in a lot of, a lot of hours, took a lot less money, which was stupid to try to win a ring. Um, but I just felt like I wasn't out there guarding Kawhi. I wasn't out there guarding Damon CJ. I wasn't out there guarding LeBron in the final. So to me, like everything had been, nothing had ever been handed to me. Like I had to get and grind to go take everything for me. So I kind of felt like with me, having a free ride through the playoffs, I wasn't really out there with my team in that grind. So that's why I felt like I didn't really earn it in the moment you know and so so what happens is I end up getting the ring a little bit later because I, I wasn't obviously there the next season for the ceremony and they do this ceremony for me and my for, for me and then I end up getting the twins rings and I stay for the game but they give me this big ass box so I give a box to Raymond Ritter shout out Ray he uh I don't even know his, I mean, he's, he's been there forever so he's <laughs> yes. way up in the ranks now but I give the box to Ray and he locks it in this room and then when me and the twins are ready to leave the room is locked so I'm just like all right well We'll just figure out how I'll get that ring, and we just never, you know, we just never really timed it up to get the ring. So everyone's saying, "Well, he didn't let he left his ring in Oakland. He didn't want it. That's this." I was just like, "No, nah, that's not really what happened. It just we never crossed paths again." <laughs> You're so. not holding the big box. Right. Yeah, the saying, What's in your box? Like, I just didn't feel like doing that. Some shit. Maybe two years later, they surprised me on the jump um, again. Ray, shout out Ray and Coach mm -hmm. Kerr. Um, drove, had it dro driven down to L.A. And, and gave it to me. So. I think there was a kind of a misconception that he didn't ex he didn't want his ring, he this, this, and that. Like I just felt like in the moment I didn't earn it, um, but it wasn't that I didn't want it. I just shit was locked in the room. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that feeling like putting that ring on for the first time? Um, it was cool. It, to be honest with you, the only time I put the ring on was that time. On on actually, I don't even think I put it on uh, on, on the jump that day. I think I went home after and put it on. 
And I mean, it was cool. Like, I'm not a jewelry person. Like I said, it just kind of, I, I looked at it and it's just like, yo, you had a, you know, you had a fun 14 year run. What? No, that wasn't the flip one, huh? The what? That you're, you're top in the flip, huh? No, there was, there was, it was Jason of Beverly Hills. It was nice. It was clean. Um, and again, I think the best part about that whole ride was that the twins got to experience with me. So they were traveling on the plane in the locker room in the Western Conference Finals after practices at nine years old, having shootouts with Katie and Steph. I was just like, to me, that experience was so dope. And when we won the championship, these little mother on the front of the stage trying to grab trophies from Coach and KD and Steph and thinking they won a championship too. So I was like, you couldn't tell those little mother they didn't win nothing. So that's why I decided to buy them <laughs> rings um, as well. But again, I think the best part of it, obviously the opportunity was dope. Playing with that team was dope. But the chance that my, the opportunity that my kids got within that experience was amazing.